We've uh, achieved double digit returns since inception. Uh, our target yield is between 12 and 15% uh, net IRR. And um, we've got five years of audited financials to show that uh, performance. And we're happy to provide all that, that information. So what does it look like if you're an accredited investor to work with like a Polaris Capital Group? You guys raising capital. How does that look like? Maybe some, you know, some general sure. framework of some returns and what that might look like. Yeah, so we're an open-ended fund. We admit capital on the first day of each month, meet monthly distributions. We're structured as a private mortgage REIT to get that tax advantage. Um, and that tax advantage, by the way, is a 20% uh, uh, reduction on the tax rate under federal taxes. And you only pay state taxes in the state that you're domiciled, which is significant uh, for no tax states. And then if you have a uh, self-directed account, there's no UBIT um, on that. The REIT structure cleanses that. But basically our fund is about 414 million assets under management today. We have a one and a half percent asset management fee, an 8% PREF to the investors, then an 80-20 split. We've uh, achieved double digit returns since inception. Uh, our target yield is between 12 and 15% uh, net IRR. And um, we've got five years of audited financials to show that uh, performance. And we're happy to provide all that, that information. But basically, the portfolio is comprised of 32 transactions um, uh, of loans across the country, uh, all secured by first lien positions on a cost basis. We lend to about 60% loan to cost basis on our bridge lending product and up to 75% cost basis on our fully stabilized. The portfolio has two loan products uh, within the one uh, fund, which is one for the stable acquisition and stabilization of the transaction. And then once the transaction is fully stabilized, cash flowing, then we drop them down into a slightly longer uh, five-year term with a uh, slightly lower rate. So that's basically what you're, you're looking at if you're coming into our fund. Fantastic. Let me try to unpack that too, because that was a ton. And by the way, rewind that and listen to that again, because that was amazing. And so two things. Okay. I want to, I want to, I want to catch on that. So you said open-ended or well, more than two, probably, but this is the first one to start with open-ended. Um, so, so maybe, maybe dive into that a little bit more. Sure. And you said it, 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 it typically releases every 30 days. Walk us through that. Uh, walk us through potentially the liquidity or lack of liquidity, or can you raise your hand if you need capital out? But uh, before you do that, it sounded like 8% preferred return. I think I caught that 80, 20 on the profit share, right? So 20% of the upside, right? Or is it 80% for the investor? Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. So let me just kind of clarify some, some vernacular. So this is a, a, as an income fund, you know, we're secured by, by loans and we're, we're deriving income that income waterfall. The first one and a half percent is an asset management fee. Then the next eight goes to the investors for income. And then um, anything over and above that one and a half plus eight is split 80-20. And even in spite of that, that hurdle, we've achieved double digit returns net to our investors since inception. Um, and that our target is between 12 and 15% net IRR. Regarding uh, open-ended just means that the fund, this is a billion dollar offering. Um, and you know, today we're, we're less than, than half of that full offering. And that uh, fund has uh, is making monthly distributions. We're admitting capital uh, monthly, and investors, you know, can come and leave as they choose. There's a six-month lockup once you've come into the fund, and after that, with 30 days' notice, you can start to exit. Um, and uh, that's that's basically it. There's one other kind of unique part to this fund, is that we also do have the. Uh, chance of, of some profit sharing. And that might be where we have an equity kicker in the, uh, the, the direct borrower or, and, and or even the uh, cannabis operator themselves. So today we have eight transactions of our 32 transactions that have equity kickers in them. And in that scenario, um, uh, if there is an option for warrants and we're in the money, then we would uh, exercise that, that option and we would split those profits 50 50 with our investors. So that is a ultimate, very unique way of, of, of coming into the cannabis sector, picking up equity with no downside um, for the cannabis operators, but yet being secured by the real estate. So you've got your downside protected.